الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام أحاسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فليعلمن الله الذين صدقوا الذين صدقوا وليعلمن الكاذبين صدق الله مرة عظيم أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن شاء الله the topic again the same uh, answers to your fiki questions but yesterday I was teaching uh, this is what we should be doing with our children anyway uh, when I drop my kids off to school in that way like half an hour it takes about 20 minutes to half an hour that's our madrasa time they read Quran to me, I will go through Tajweedi rules, all the Munna, Ikhfa, Dhamme Shafi, Dhamme, all those rules we go through. Then whatever I understand or may, maybe they understand or which is really good for them and Nasiha or advice, I give them the tafsir as well in that way. So I was talking to them, they were on Surah An Kabut. So the first ayat, first, second and third ayat. First is Alif La Meem. So after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ahasib al Nas. What people think, what actually what Muslim think, it is people, what people think that just because they say La ilaha illallah, they read Kalima, la ilaha illallah wa shalla Muhammad Rabbu wa Rasulu. Once they read that Kalima, then uh, they are good to go in Jannah, they will have a very good life and they won't be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that's not the case. You know, when we see, okay. Nobody, Imam Sahib, that person is living a life of sins. Or my friend, he's non Muslim and he's driving Range Rover. And me driving here, Toyota, and my life is really bad. His life is really good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You read Kalima. You going in Jannah. You think Jannah is going to be easy? Jannah won't be easy. The test after test after test. You were sent in this dunya for what? To go through tests. Then Jannah will come to you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, This life, life of a mu'min, life of a believer, life of a Muslim, is like he's living in a cage. It's like he's living in a prison. Life of this dunya. And life of a non-Muslim is outside the cage. Living an easy life. Why? Because he will be given everything in this dunya. You know, end of the day, those who don't believe in Allah. Remember, Allah knows still they are my people. You know, let's say mother, you got two boys. One boy, he loves his mom, he obeys his mom, whatever mom says, he listens to her. But other boy, he doesn't listen to mom. But still, she knows, end of the day, he's my boy. It's not gonna be like she'll be giving him punishment, the other boy, just giving him all the luxuries. No, that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa says, don't look at other people that know they are living good life. Look at yourself, concentrate on yourself because you are a mu'min. Jannah is coming to you, but it's not gonna be easy. You go through difficulties. Why difficulties come in your life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ So the people who came before you, we put them through tests as well. Why? فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ So that, so that we know that أَلَّا ذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Those who are staying on truth, are you really going to stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you're going to leave the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something comes like a court case come and your friend says to you look I know I'm bad and that question came actually um, I know I'm bad but please can you come to court and give a, some wrong statement like lie for me so that I can get away with that court case and the, the friend found me I said no you can't do that even he's a Muslim and other side is non-Muslim you have to take non-Muslim side why because he's in truth it's coming from Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you cooperate with other people upon what? For a good. If the, whoever is on good, you have to cooperate with that person. And la ta'avanu ala al And you cannot cooperate with that person. Either he's a Muslim. Either 
she is your mother either she he is your father if he is saying something wrong you have to give statement against your father you have to give statement against your mother you have to give statement against your sibling no matter how good she is in deen no matter how much she is or he is following the path of religion but she or he is doing something wrong allah is saying you cannot take her or his side you have to take side of that person no matter how bad he is to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter even though he is non muslim you have to take his side not your friend side so allah says whatever tests are coming in your life don't give up maybe for you the like like sister they message me phone me how come my husband married to another person oh he is cheating on me and this and that and i'm going through difficulties of my son passed away oh i'm very young and my husband passed away i'm on 25 and why allah is doing this to me remember if allah is doing this to you you learn lessons there are lessons for you to learn never complain you can sit down you can cry whatever you want to do but don't complain learn lessons and move on in your life the more you learn lessons the more you become strong and then after that in your life maybe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take a big job from you you know whoever are giving difficulties in their lives whoever are giving difficulties in their lives more and more difficulties remember they are the big one who become the leaders look at the life of all the prophets difficulty after difficulty look at the life of all the companions of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam difficulties after difficulties and they become leader person who's you know in your you have two sons one is living a life you spoiled him he's going to have a very difficult life but one your son is going through difficulties tasks works everything his life is going to be very successful because he's already used to of going through difficulties and difficulties and ah okay i've seen many difficulties i'll go through this one as well so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to truly understand and grasp on the knowledge of deen amin let's go towards uh, questions uh, first question is um, you know uh, we went to uh, a, a shop a sofa shop to buy some sofas and we went to that and the the colleague that he was non muslim sikh brother and he somehow he, he he i don't know how he watched my video or something and he knew me he said imam i watched your video i don't know what he went to uh, a sh- uh, you know there's a masjid i don't want to mention that masjid's name he went for funeral to that masjid but before he went to the masjid the the committee member of that masjid or someone said to him make sure tomorrow when you come in the masjid make sure you take bath although we want let you enter in masjid basically calling him impure and he said to me said you know what I, imam i did go because it was my friend's funeral i did go but i never entered in masjid it broke my heart all i he said what is the ruling all i that's very wrong what he said to you and i spoke to the masjid people as well and how dare you say that don't you know anything about islam Don't you know what happened when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our Prophet Muhammad when he migrated from Makkah to Medina when he went to another city another city all those delegations of Christians where they used to stay they used to stay in mosque which mosque mosque of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Masjid An-Nabawi in Haram Park in Medina Sharif they're not going to stay somewhere else they used Christian and they used to do their worship inside the masjid Prophet let them do it Prophet never told them go and you first you take bath and then you come in a masjid how wrong is that what kind of image are you giving then i talked to those three imams i said did you say that he said imam you know we would have never said that it's probably someone who has no knowledge probably the random person from masjid they probably said it otherwise it's wrong what they said all the school you know people who come here to to the masjid are we really really going to say to all those kids go and take bath and then you come here or anyone who's non muslim who comes in the masjid we say to him that no no first you go take bath and then you come in masjid we never want to let you come in a masjid how wrong is that of course a non muslim because you know remember the rulings of sharia applies upon muslims as soon as you sign this contract ashhadu la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu you signed a contract in islam now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says udkhulu fi silmi kaffa enter in the fold of islam completely not one leg out and one in for muslims it is very important if they are going through major impurity for muslims if they are going to major impurity major impurity you had a sexual intercourse with your wife or you had a bad dream or something that you have to take bath that's major impurity minor impurities that nothing happen but you are not in wudu like ablution you are not washed up yourself you can still enter in masjid but when a major impurity is upon you you cannot step in a masjid both for non muslims of course they can come in masjid because they never read kalima they have not entered in that company when you go and work for a company let's say you go to next 
or sell fridges you go and start folding clothes and start hanging clothes and end of the month you say to them you know pay me my wages and hold on a second you never signed a contract no matter what you do we're not going to pay you sign a contract enter in a company sign on terms and conditions and then we will start your wage and then your days will and your hours will start they never signed a contract how come they are ob obliged to all these things they are not obliged to all these things so if you don't know about religion please don't jump in or you are not helping islam you actually harming islam and nowadays to be honest a basic muslim they have no knowledge of islam inshallah i'm here now full time from first of october I'm, i'll be bringing my inshallah uh, you know programs here i want you to send your youth here i'm already teaching children alhamdulillah here but six years old to 16 years old they are coming here i have about 250 students here both those programs will be only for youth for boys and girls of course they will be screening in between send your children i'll be just talking to youth you know how many mothers and how many i'm telling you even yesterday pretty much i think one hour or two hours i just spoke to the mother she said my daughter is 13 years old 14 years old we are from the family of rasulullah we are sayyid sadat and i taught her everything good everything i gave her phone 13 years old now she goes on tiktok and i don't know what kind of stuff style she does she said i want to go here i want to do this please help us these kind of daughters and these kind of sons i want you to send in this you know, these are my targets Whenever I have a list, I've got like 50 students right now in waiting list for Madrasa. But first I talk to parents. I see who needs to come in. Why? Because who goes to hospitals? Who goes to hospitals? The people who have some kind of illnesses. Healthy person, why, why he needs to go to hospitals? I want to keep those students and those youngsters and youth in this masjid who need help. I always say to my teachers as well, let's say this girl or this boy, and I know it. I know, and some of the girls that the teachers know as well, that she drinks or she's in a, you know, haram relationship, whatever. Then the teacher said, no, mom, sir, she's going to give bad names. Said, no, this is the girl I want here. Or this is the boy I want here. Even though they're not reading nothing at all, let them just sit down. Don't, 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 don't tell them, no, you're doing this and you're doing that. Even though she's not doing stuff properly, just tell her once or twice. That's all you have to do. But make sure our main motive is that she or he stays here the one and a half hour because company changes you if she stays in a good company somehow somehow she will change give a month give a two months six months one year yes if she is affecting other students then we will think about that if she's affecting others our company is affecting others then we are good so before you jump in islam religion or anything please come to us and ask us so that we tell you what you are thinking which is halal is actually haram and what you are thinking haram is actually Halal. Next question. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Sahib. So I had a question regarding events like baby showers, men, these dholkis, etc. Are these events allowed in Islam? So basically, we think that before marriage, all those you know uh, ceremonies we do, like mehndi or dholki, they're coming from non-Muslim cultures, like uh, Hindu Hindu culture. Or this is where India they're coming from. So that's why it is haram for us. You know what 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 is the ruling? Oh, baby showers as well, like before pregnancy, before the baby is born. They go out and then people they bring gifts and all that stuff. As long as they are not going against the Sharia, you're doing mandi in your house before the marriage and all girls they get together and then they sing and whatever. Then as long as music is not there like the plus music and all that and no mixed gathering other non non mahram boys are not there only girls are there then they can take the scarf off as well as well. It's, it's okay. So mandi is perfectly fine because you when you do mandi your you know mind doesn't go towards another religion. It doesn't go towards another religion because everyone is doing nowadays no matter which country you go to everyone is doing it yeah if something is bringing that in your mind or this belongs to that specific to that culture then you have to leave why because you cannot cross uh, you know you cannot adopt any other religions religious ceremonies that's the one condition otherwise if it's not then of course you can like birthdays people say birthdays are haram how come birthdays are haram rasulullah is our prophet peace be upon him on monday he was born and he used to say when he was asked why did you fast on monday and he said because that's the day i was born i'm thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all these ceremonies whatever you want to do the baby showers everything mandi dolki everything everything is jais as long as it's not going against the sharia allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feet to understand now there's another uh, no, very normal question people people ask you can we wear tabis tabis amulets on your hand or around your neck or on your arm can we wear these tabis is a jais is not jais why because the rasulullah says whoever wears tabis or an, uh, an amulet has committed shirk this is in muslim ahmad hadith is 
रसूलत हदीस इज दैर बट फर्स्ट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हदीस हदीस सामने आ गई तो उसका हदीस में हो सकता है इसके मुकाबले में दस हजार हदीसी हूँ अब आपके जहन से गुजरी है So are they going against the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? They do not understand this hadith, and we understood this hadith in this time. What Rasul, what the Wid Rasulullah sallam saying that if you do that, you are doing shirk. Now hold on a second. You know it make no sense as well. Let's say you have something with you, anything. I'm not talking about the Wid. Anything with you. Ah, uh, let's say something. Allah's name. Now you are taking protection for Allah's name. Allah's name. How that Allah name is shirk with Allah. Like Allah, Allah, you are comparing Allah with Allah. You are not comparing anyone else with Allah. How that is shirk? Then all those friends in your house, while asal inna insan ala fi khosar top of your television, where you watch all the before you movies as well, and there Allah's names are there. The Quran you are hanging in your car, and I think kuch you hanging in your car. That's shirk as well. Then how come you can take all this protect? They all for protection. That name in that tawhid is for protection of Allah subhanahu from shaitan or from all the black magic and everything. What the Sunnah some said. He saw some people at that time. They were having tawiz or the amulet in around their neck. The names were written Lat Manat Uzza. Uzza Lat Manat were idols of that time, the biggest, major idols. Idols. But so now you're doing shirk. You are associating someone else with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Of course, makes sense because it's shirk. You cannot take help from anyone else other than Allah. But when the name comes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then you how is that shirk? Allah is with Allah because we were taking help from Allah. It's only Allah's name. I, I don't. It makes no sense. Yes, the other thing. Nowadays, as I said to you, Muslims don't have much knowledge, basic even knowledge about Deen. So they don't care what is written inside. They think the band is protecting me. I just have the black thing around me. They don't even know what's written inside. They don't know anything. They think until this is there, I am protected. This is not there. I the protection is gone. How weak your man has gone. Go read Nimaz, read Quran. Quran. We don't want to read Quran. We don't want to read the Sirah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't want to read nothing about. Obligatory knowledge. What is highest level? Highest level is the obligatory knowledge. What is obligatory? Five times for the nimaz. If pilgrimage is for the pound, you hajj. Go do hajj. But all these things we are lacking. We don't want to read nimaz. We don't want to do nothing. We want to earn haram as well. We don't want to earn halal. And then we have taviz around. What the taviz is going to do to you? This is why your man has gone weak. That's the reason our scholar says no. Take the taviz off and put it aside because it's making putting shirk in your mind that you are not even thinking about Allah. You actually thinking about that patti, that string around your neck. You think the string is stopping me? No, it's actually Allah. And if you really want help from Allah, go read Nimaz, go read Quran. That's real help. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us the faith to understand our Deen. Wa ma alayna illa al-balaghul mubin. Jazakallah khair.